What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason and Joe here, album of the week, uh, reacting to, or I should say, reviewing albums submitted to us by our patrons. We fell a little behind, so we're plowing through a bunch uh, from when I was sick, uh, getting caught up. Today, we're talking about the album Wild Seed, Wild Flower by Dion Ferris from 1994. Uh, so she was a part of Arrested Development, decided to break off and do a solo record uh, with members of a group called Follow For Now, who I've never really heard of before. But uh, one of those people from that group uh, is David Ryan Harris, who I am familiar with and I actually saw him play uh, live last year. Uh, he opened for a show I went to in, in Philly and uh, Billy Fields as well. Don't know a lot about her. I know the single from this. Um, I think it's a great 90s one hit wonder. We'll talk about that more. But yeah, I didn't have much experience listening to her in the past. Zero background on her as far as I know, other than I know, which I know. Uh, I've heard it many times, but I didn't remember when this was picked for album of the week and everyone was talking about, I know, I was like, I don't remember what that is. And then as soon as you hear it, that like first note, you're like, Oh Jesus, this song, I've heard this song a million times in the supermarket, in the mall, anywhere where there's music being played over a loudspeaker that is inoffensive. You'll hear this song many times. Uh, so I, I did know that one, but nothing else. Everything else about her, uh, other than you know Tennessee by Arrested Development, I have not heard. All right, so let's dive in to the record. How you feel about the the songwriting on this one? Uh, I think the songwriting is good. I think it unfortunately is a little dwarfed by the big single. I know, which is just it has such a unique sound for the '90s. And unfortunately, that's really the only time you get that. And probably the most interesting about this whole thing was the fact that that song was co-written by William Duvall, Future of Alice in Chains. And I, I thought that was really, really weird. Uh, Lenny Kravitz also wrote a song on here. And so did John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Maybe she covers Blackbird, so... Uh, which which is fine. It's a good written song, that's for sure. But I don't know. I like the mix of styles. There's some alternative hip hop. There's some funk, some pop rock, folk rock, you know, rock, just regular rock. But I don't know if she touches on anything long enough to really make anything hers. And it's just sort of like touching on these things without really getting into it. And the way that she jumps around maybe hurts this, it a little bit as far as the, like the concept of the songwriting, because you don't really get a great feel of what she's about, um, I don't think. There's some good written songs, but there's a lot of songs. It's 63 minutes long, so a little too much maybe here. I think it was pared down and really you know picked her seven or eight best songs. I think you'd, you'd have something pretty good. But the way it's spread out so much and she's just jumping around, um, I think hurts it a little bit. Yeah, it's too long, for sure. This whole thing, every category that we talk about here, it's really like a mixed bag. They try so many different things and like different combinations of genre mixing. And uh, I think there's a wide variety in quality in the songwriting. There's some really good songs here. There's some kind of really forgettable stuff. Uh, not too much that's outright bad, but I know I think is so good. It deserves more love. Even in the conversation of 90s one hit wonders, I think it needs to be talked about more. I think it's really good. Uh, now or Later, I think it's a pretty solid tune. Blackbird, obviously a great song. And I think Human's pretty strong too. It has kind of like an, a unique uh, kind of like acapella arrangement. Those are the highlights for me, but yeah, there's some other good stuff. But it's just a, a, all over the place. So many different styles of songs and quality of songs for me. Uh, how about the musicianship? Solid musicianship across the board. Nothing, you know, nothing bad at all. I think everyone's playing really well. It sounds like a studio ensemble. It doesn't sound like a band. It just sounds like you know good session players picked out to 
sound very good in the 90s and it, it has kind of that 90s feel to the playing and, and what they're they're doing but you know everything sounds great that slide guitar part um and i know is phenomenal so i mean no no complaints i don't know if anything stands out too much other than that slide guitar part but i mean there's plenty of sort of like nice guitar parts and you know well played lines but i don't think anything that really like stands up and you know makes you say what was that yeah i have almost the same note like it's pretty clear that everybody performing on this is like top notch uh player really like has that pro session type of feel which is good but it also i think robs it of some personality that it could have like if she had assembled just like a band and and did these same tunes with a band and everybody like the same lineup playing on every track i think maybe could have had more interesting results vocally as far as her vocal chops go again all over the place like i can't figure out how good she is like there's times where she's just a killer like powerhouse i think on uh i know she's great on human passion she's great um, but at other times like unless she's like really going for it like going for the jugular when she kind of sits back a little more i think she becomes pretty anonymous uh, and I don't think she's as interesting. So there's moments on this record where where you, you can kind of like be blown away by the vocals. But a lot of times, I think it could be almost anyone singing. So uh, yeah, just all over uh, all over the place in terms of quality again for me. The production sounds like the '90s. Sounds like a lot of session players playing in the '90s. And there's nothing you know, nothing wrong with that. But if you heard this album, you know exactly like within like. 12 months probably you could guess when this was produced and recorded and came out because it just has a just such a distinct 90s sound and there's like seven producers on this album and so it's surprisingly coherent as far as like the sound goes even if the songwriting and uh, styles jump around it, it all sounds very similar and it, it sounds fine but it sounds like it's from 1994 and could not be any other time or, or place in you know universe it does sound very 90s i have that same thing written jagged little pills 95 though huh this, i hear a lot of jagged little pill on this i think someone was listening to this record especially in like the bass and the drums the sounds are very similar so you have to take that for what it's worth but um yeah, I think they find a pretty nice intersection of rock, R&B, hip-hop, and pop. I think they kind of land in like a safe space within that, though. Like, um, it, it ends up, you know, you're blending all these different styles of music, but you kind of end up in adult contemporary land a little bit, rather than more interesting areas of those genres. Um, so there's that, but... Uh, mostly the, the production's good. It sounds good. It's a good sounding record. There's a few nitpicky things I have, like the vocal effect or the way it's EQ'd or a filter or something on the track, Food for Thought. I think her voice sounds a little harsh on that track. And I think whenever they try to do more of like a hard rock sound and they bring in like the hard rock guitars, I think the guitar sounds are not good in those instances, but overall, well produced. Uh, best and worst track. Well, the best track is obviously I Know, and there was a reason why it was number four and was literally everywhere. Uh, worst track for me, probably, ooh, where is it? Food for Thoughts, probably the, the weak one for me. It just kind of meanders, and I don't think like the slow jam, which is kind of what it is, but I don't know. It doesn't have much going for it. It just sort of exists and it it lacks any defining features um and kind of misses the mark same uh, i know is the by far the best song if i had to give a runner up i'd give it to to human which i think is uh an interesting arrangement and i think a really good vocal performance and a good song uh and my worst is also food for thought i just think that vocal effect um isn't working very well score i'm at uh, again 
as I always am, a high 3.5. I think it's a, a good listen, but it needs to be cut down by four to five songs. And I think maybe maybe if you pick the best like nine songs, it would be four stars. But the way it just goes on, it jumps around too much. It's not focused. 63 minutes is too long. And yeah, a, a good album, but I don't think I would come back to it. I, I could pick a couple of songs and I missed how i don't know how i missed i know for the 94 deep dive it wasn't even on my top 100 or whatever uh maybe it's just like so ubiquitous that it's just like doesn't count anymore but other than that it's, it's probably about it i'm surprised this al album was still eligible after all of us deep, deep diving 94 i can't believe eight people didn't listen to it for the deep dive so flying under the radar a bit my score for this i'm at a high three almost a 3.5 I think if it was just a little shorter, a little tighter, some of the weaker tracks trimmed, I think it could maybe be like a 3.5. It's just too long and um, too, too all over the place a little bit. So there you go. Let us know what you think of this record. If you heard it, drop your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, check the video description for Patreon. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.